All right, hey, what's up, guys? This is Riley from becominganelectrician.com. If you guys like this content, be sure to visit the website. You guys can sign up to the email list and be notified when I release new videos and new articles. Uh, also, be sure to check out some of the electrical jokes I have on there. There's a couple funny ones like a wire stretcher and uh, what is black phase tape and what is a bucket of volts. Those are common things that you might hear on a job site. Now, today I want to talk to you about a panel schedule. This is called an electrical panel schedule. If you're looking at this and you're confused, don't worry. I'm going to break it down. It's not too complicated, but this is kind of like a typical little panel schedule that you may see in more like a, a home. There is single phase and three phase. I'm going to break down more three phase in this video. This is what you're looking at here. This is like a single phase panel. All right, so this is an electrical panel schedule. It's what we electricians use as we are pulling our wires, mainly our home runs, which means we need to pull one dedicated circuit to lighting. We need to pull one dedicated circuit to the bathroom fan. You can see down here at the dryer, you can see that this actually has two circuits. So it's circuit nine and 11. We'll break this down further in just a moment. I want to quickly talk about an equipment schedule. We're not going to go into detail. I will, I will make another video on this. But the reason why I want to talk about this is because if you are looking at your electrical panel schedule and if you're thinking, oh, well, it's a 15 amp breaker. Well, let's say that's number 14 wire or if it's a 30 amp breaker, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's number 10. And you can look at that kind of, but it's quite dangerous in a commercial setting. In a commercial setting, uh, the electrical engineer, they give us what's called an equipment schedule. I just kind of drew up this kind of fake diagram. Uh, but you can see the equipment schedule actually tells you what phase it is. So if it's single phase or three phase, it's going to tell you the wire size as well as if it's copper or aluminum. You have notes on there, which you can look down here for further notes. You want to be looking at the equipment schedule for the actual wire size and everything pertaining to that equipment. All right, so on this equipment schedule, I just want to bring your attention to the MUA. Okay, this is, this is called a makeup air unit. I used to always call it MUAs on the job site. So a makeup air unit is something that typically goes on the rooftop and it's like the air handler unit for your, you know, your air conditioning and heating. It's a really, really big unit. You can see that it'll like give you the symbol on the prints. It'll give you a little breakdown of it. It'll tell you what panel it's from. Typically the location so you can find it easier on your prints. It'll also tell you the load. It'll tell us the voltage. This is very important as well, as well as the phase, as well as the wire size. So what I'm trying to say is, again, I'm not covering this in this video, the equipment schedule, but if you are in a commercial setting and sometimes in a residential setting, uh, you have to be looking at the equipment schedule to fully determine what is going on on your panel schedule. Okay. So they're two separate things. So what I'm saying is, you know, a dryer here, you might think, oh, well, I'll just run a 10-2 to it. It doesn't work that way because the dryer still needs that neutral. So you need a 10-3, all right? And you're not going to get that information by looking at a panel schedule. Now, before we cover this, I want to draw out a typical layout for you to understand about phase, okay? So there is single phase, and you, know, you might see it drawn like that. Or there's three phase. That means phase. What does phase mean? Okay, so we have A, B, or C, or red, black, blue, or red, and I'll go black, or we have blue. Hopefully you can see the blue in the video. Uh, okay, so red, black, or blue. Now, when we are in a residential setting, we are, we only have two phases, so it'd just be A and B. So if we come back to our panel schedule, you can see our circuits, all right? So how it works is it'll go A, B, C, a, B, C, and I'll put it right here in the middle because how it works is one and two is A, we go down to three and four, which is B, and then we go to five and six, which is C, and it repeats, all right? So I'll do this again, and I'll tell you a little trick that I've learned on a job site from Journeyman, is you can tell if it's blue by, if it's divisible by six and back one, okay? So you can see that uh, six is blue, and then you go back one, it's also blue. 12 is blue, because it's evenly divisible by six, and you go back one, and it's 11. So I want to quickly talk about just a panel. So how it works is it goes A, all right, and it'd be one and two, and I'll just do this. We go to B, and you have three and four, okay? 
So red, black, and this will be blue. And it repeats over and over and over. So five and six. Okay? So literally, it would just go A, B, C. So from six, we go seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So when we are talking about a three phase panel to a single phase panel, a single phase panel would just have two. So it would literally just go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And inside of a home, the reason for that is that they have just pulled two hots and your neutral. All right. So if we're talking about your oven or your dryer or something that needs two phases to get to 240, that's because we're supplying it with two hots. Okay. In a three phase system, we just have an extra conductor in the main. So you would have three hots and then again, that neutral. So we have single phase and we also have three phase. Okay. So what this means is in a home, Let's just do single phase over here. So we have a single phase panel. So in a single phase panel, there's actually two hots. It's A and B, red, black. In a three phase panel, we actually have A, B, and C. Because of the way a panel is laid out, you can see circuit one and circuit two are actually A phase. So it's circuit one and circuit two, just like you're seeing right here, circuit one, circuit two. We go to B phase, now we have circuit three and circuit four. Okay, so same thing here one, two, three, four, just like here, but now we have five and six. Okay, so what's really important to understand is A is red, B is black, and these, you know, this stuff never changes. Sometimes I've seen in high voltage situations, these colors can be like uh, orange, yellow, and brown, but here, this is blue. And so how it goes is you put your circuit breaker in. Let's say we have a 15 amp breaker. All right. This lighting is telling us it's one pole. It's on circuit one. And so generally as an electrician, we would know that that is one hot wire and a neutral. Okay. Because here in North America, a lighting, we need that hot, we need a neutral and it's typically 120 volts. So for example, Kitchen counter plugs, we can see it's one pole, 20 amps. So again, yeah, generally we as electricians know that's a number 12 and it's just one hot and it has its neutral. So it's just 120 at those plugs. Now we go to the dryer and it's a little bit different. We see that there's two poles. So in other words, we are actually using A and B. That is how we're getting our 240 or 208, depending on uh, you know the building you're in. If it's coming from a three phase system or a single phase system. In three phase, it would be 208 volts. And I'll just go 240 volts here just to keep it simple. So in a home, 240, and generally in a commercial facility, because it's typically three phase, it'd be 208. Okay, not to get too much into that, but all I'm saying is if you're if you want 208 and three phase, you need to take either A, B, B, C, or C and A. Okay, so you need two phases. Now again, you can see dryer that it's using B and C. So those are two separate phases. And so when I talk about phase, I'll just quickly show you here. Like, so that, that's just to do with the sine wave. So if we just have a you know, basic sine wave, let's say this is A, we come from here. So this is B, we come from here. And so this is C. When we talk about our 60 Hertz and all that technical kind of stuff, this is one phase. These are the different phases, A, B, and C. So we can run power on them, but we cannot take two circuits from A. We cannot take two circuits from B. We cannot take two circuits from C to get 240, or 208. Now we look at the dryer, 30 amps. And so again, we as electricians, we'd be like, oh, well, that's a 30 amp breaker. We would go into our code book, into the charts to, that tells us amperage for our wires. And we would be able to find that this is good for number 10. However, there's two th main things that this electrical panel schedule does not tell us. And that's why it's dangerous to assume that the wire size is number 10, let's say. Okay, so it doesn't tell us wire size. It also doesn't tell us phase. When we talk about certain equipment, it can be 208 single phase, okay? Because now imagine we are in a three phase panel. If we just take two phases, it still gives us 208. However, sometimes a motor takes all three phases. So it would be A, B, and C, and it's still 208 volts, okay? And that comes to these sine waves, okay? The A, B, and C. Now, I wanna quickly 
show you that on an equipment schedule, but generally the electrical engineer, they give you this. It's your job as the electrician to look it over and make sure that all of the pieces of the puzzle connect. Again, we're always trying to protect our wire. If we have single phase, what did I tell you? Single phase actually has two phases, it's A and B, and it just goes A, B, A, B, A, B in the panel, all right? In three phase, it actually goes A, B, C, A, B, C. I also told you that you can have 208 volts single phase because we are using two wires, okay, two different phases to get 208 because if it was just 120, so one hot wire and a neutral, that's 120. If we take two hots in a three phase system, it becomes 208. Now, some equipment, as you can see, is 208 three phase and now you need a three conductor, okay? So these are both number 12s. All right, but this dishwasher is 208 single phase, so it just requires two hots. In other words, if you are going to install this exhaust fan, which is 208, three phase, so three wires, and if you see it written this way, when it says three number 12s, this is specifying the insulated conductors, okay? So we have two insulated conductors, three insulated conductors. So this wire right here, if it's this typical NMD or Romex or, you know, wherever you are in North America, whatever you call it, it'd be a black and a white wire. So you could use that for single phase 120, because as you can see, this exhaust fan one is only 120 volts. So what that means is we are actually sending one hot and a neutral to it. You come down here, it's 208, single phase, it's using that same wire, right? That two conductor 12, you can down here, two conductor 12 copper. But in this case, this dishwasher is just getting too hot, so it doesn't have a neutral, and again, it would have that bond wire, but that's a bare wire. They do not count that bare wire as a conductor. These are the ones that are insulated, okay? So this exhaust fan, let's say for example, it's three phase, it has three wires. So if you were to pull uh, two conductor 12 to this exhaust fan, and if the building is in finishing mode and all of a sudden you realize, oh no, you need to pull a new wire. And that's why it's so important to look at this equipment schedule because it's going to tell you the wire size and how many conductors. In order to understand a dryer, again, we would have to look at this equipment schedule because this dryer actually needs a 10-3, okay? So three conductor number 10. And the reason is because a dryer has electronics on it. It also has a light bulb in it. And so we need that neutral still. You would actually need three conductors number 10, okay? So you'd need, you'd need an A, a B, and you also need that neutral. Again, it could be B, C, C, A, all right? Here, you could be pulling the wrong wire to your dryer just by looking at the electrical panel schedule, if that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, you go back and you watch the video and you follow closely, okay? And before I wrap up this video, I wanna to talk to you about clean and dirty sets. So on a job site, typically we want to have clean sets. They're just way easier to manage. And so what is a clean set? A clean set would be A, B, and C. A, B, and C. So for example, if we have a neutral, because this is what's called a full set. So if we we're going to pull a full set, that could be one, three, and five. So one, three, and five could have its own neutral. Sometimes on the job site to save a wire in a pipe, sometimes they might take one, three, and they'll come down here to 11 and they'll take the 11. Uh, but the thing is, it can get really, really messy. So for example, sometimes on a job site, if a piece of equipment was you know, further away from another piece of equipment, sometimes we'd go A, B would get its own neutral, and then C would also get its own neutral. So but very often, you just wanna work in this way, so you work in sets, okay? Another reason why you wanna be pulling it in one, three, five, or two, four, six, because this is the left side of the panel, this is the right side of the panel, is because of how they make breakers. The breakers are created kind of like this, okay? I'll quickly finish off this video with, uh, with this breaker. Now, this is a different style of breaker. This is a GFI breaker for a hot tub. This is all I had on me at the moment. Um, so without these silver ones, it would look like this, okay? So you'd have two 
hots. And if I bring that a little bit closer, you can see how it has load power L1 and load power L2. So that's a line one, so let's say A phase, and we come here to two, that is B phase. And typically how these install is they will button and then you just push in the contacts. Now, one last thing just to say is these breakers, they need to be a two pole and you can see they also have like a clip on them. All right, so that means that if they, bo like they both have to turn on and if one trips, they, they both trip, okay? And this is just a safety thing. If a piece of equipment was three poles, it would have another line with an extra arrow there. All right, I just wanna do a quick recap of an electrical panel schedule. So we as electricians use this to determine what circuits are off of this panel. Now, if you are in a residential setting, many of these items are very common and we just kind of know them by memory. When you are in a commercial setting, it's very dangerous to just look off of the panel schedule without looking at the equipment schedule, okay? So again, if you're in a residential setting, most of this stuff is pretty common in terms of like, let's say a dryer, you know, like we, we just know on a job site that a dryer gets a 10-3 and a stove typically gets an 8-3 because again, it has that light also has electronics and stuff like that, so it needs the neutral. Same with the dryer, but this is not telling you that. That's just common knowledge. In a commercial setting, when we look at any of these circuits, or if we look at the dryer, for example, we come to our equipment schedule, it will break down everything for that piece of equipment. It will allow you to make much less mistakes. All right, so thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys would like more information, about learning to become an apprentice electrician, check out my website, becominganelectrician.com. I'm based in Canada, so most of my knowledge is, is Canadian uh, electrical. If you guys would like to stay updated, you guys can sign up to the email list and I will notify you if I release a new video or write a new article. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you in the next one.